Hi fans of high quality entertainment. Hi fans of high quality entertainment. <laughs> Hi fans of high quality entertainment. Everybody hurts. It took her a second. Did I wake you up? I'm sorry. I apologize. I bought some stuff at the store, at the record store. Now, I usually would do these kind of unboxings on my ASMR Larry Graves channel, which now has 2,000 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. The uh, link will be below. But I thought I would open up these. I bought REM's Automatic for the People, two CD 25th Anniversary Edition CDs. And I also bought three other CDs by a certain artist who I was listening to on Spotify last night. I've always liked them, but you know what? I'm gonna start buying all of his albums, or at least quite a few of them. So here we go, this was $23.99. I've always liked R.E.M. I've, I've never been a huge fan, but I've always enjoyed their music. And this is my favorite R.E.M. album. It means a lot to me. Uh, the last two songs, Night Swimming and Find the River. Uh, it has to do with my, my first marriage to Nancy. Uh, just memories, you know, having to do with those two songs. But other songs like Drive, Everybody Hurts. With Everybody Hurts, there's, there's times in the past I thought, oh my God, that's such a mawkish, silly song. And then the other half of the time, it's like, oh my God, that song is really affecting me. It's really touching me. And these days, I think it's more of really affecting me. Ignore Land, Star Me Kidden, Man on the Moon. So let's unbox up. And then I'll show you the other three CDs I bought. This includes a live album, newly remixed, 1992, live at the 40 Watt Club show. R.E.M.'s only concert that year, a 24-page booklet, remastered audio. And it includes the hits that I mentioned. I, I never cared for their uh, album covers and their packaging. It was a, a little too arty for me. But I mean the music itself. What is this? What is this? A poster? It's a poster. Wow, that is cool. That is really cool. Wasn't even expecting that. I'm not going to show it to you. Yes, I will. Look at that. I might use that. I, I had one for my thumbnail. Maybe I'll use this as my thumbnail. Fake smile. I don't fake smile. Except at funerals. It was worth it just for that poster. And then a booklet. No? Well, there's a lot of stuff in this. I am very impressed. Individual pictures of the band members, whatever their names are. I know their names. Peter Bach and Michael Stipe. Is it Stipe? Uh, and the guy with one eyebrow. You know, he, had, he just had a unibrow. I forget his name. And then the other guy. Yeah, that's Peter Buck. I know my band members. And that is, uh, I forget at the moment, but I do know. 
There's the booklet. I would have been happy just with the damn booklet, but a poster and in individual pictures. Their follow-up album, Monster, wasn't uh, quite as appreciated, but I always loved them. I actually still have my old, old copy of Monster, but I'm going to wait for it to, to be remastered. And next week I'm getting the newly remastered Queen News of the World. There is a box set for it, but I'm just interested in the... I think it's a two CDs. So there's the album. It opens on top. And just like the original CD. Cool. And their live album. Pause that if you want to read it, if you can. Focus. It opens on top, Larry. I've been kind of struggling with wanting to do a video on uh, top ten lists and the Beatles and everything. And it has to do with, for instance, last night I posted on Facebook, yes, uh, my favorite, listening to my favorite band, yes. And I wasn't making, <clears throat> making a joke or anything, because you know what? When I'm listening to Yes music, Tales from Topographic Oceans, oh my god, Going for the One, oh my god, all of their early albums, and even Magnification, which I uh, opened on my ASMR channel yesterday, that's a great album, a great later album. When I'm listening to Yes, they are my favorite band. When I'm listening to Tales from Topographic Ocean, it is the best album and the individual four, four songs on the album, each one is the best song of all time. I'm serious. But then again, when I played the Beatles A Day in the Life, it's the greatest song of all time. When I listen to David Bowie's Black Star, it is the best. I don't know, that's why I think I'm going to get away from these top ten lists, because in the long run, there's so much friggin' great music. And if a song is the best, you can have more than one song that is the greatest. That's the best. That's the way I feel at this age in my life. Captain Beefheart. When I'm listening to Captain Beefheart, he's the greatest artist. When I listen to Lou Reed, when I listen to the Velvet Underground, Sister Ray, that is the best friggin' song of all time. See where I'm going with this? So, this is an artist I've always really, really respected. I've bought albums of his in the past. I've enjoyed them. I've really liked them. Not all of them. I haven't bought all of them. But I listened to him on Spotify, and I ended up buying three of his earlier albums. Now, this is, I think, a an older one. I think it's 1999. It's probably a newer remastered version. David Bowie's Low. This is the one I was listening to on Spotify. And I do remember, I never bought, I, ne I don't think I ever owned it on vinyl. But I've been listening to it. Speed of Life and Breaking Glass. It's like, I could just listen to it on Spotify, but I like the physical when I really, really love music. And so, and women. And yeah, and then side two of this, I know it's uh, like meditation almost music, just instrumentals, really different, and I'm going to enjoy that too. I was listening to a little bit of it. But seriously, when I'm listening to David Bowie's Black Star, the song, it 
It's just the greatest song in the universe. It really is. But <laughs> I feel that the way, that way about probably hundreds of songs. Who would I consider the best rock band or artist of all time? It would still be the Beatles. They were the only artist or band that never disappointed me. I mean, Sparks have, have released good albums and great, great albums. Same with Lou Reed and every other band, basically. Blue Easter Cult. But the Beatles were just perfect, in, in my opinion. But I would say right now, Yes is my favorite artist, my favorite band. I've been listening to them a lot more than the Beatles. But that's not taking any way, anything away from the Beatles. Nice booklet. And I'm, I'm planning a giveaway contest soon. I actually made a video and then I deleted it because I, I'm changing my mind about things. And I, I've heard this album. I don't, I'm not familiar with all the songs on it, but I certainly, I think my, one of my favorite David Bowie songs is on this album. Scary Monsters. Is it just called Scary Monsters? I thought it was also called and is it Super Freaks? But I think this is a yeah, 1999. This is an enhanced CD. Maybe it's got videos or something. And also, when I was listening to Black Star last night, I was, I, you know, the video for it is so incredible. But that's one time when I think, as, as great as the song is, that video enhances the song. Even when you're not watching the video, you, you can imagine that video while listening to the song, and it just seems to even make it more special. Ignore that. So, in the comment section below, I would love your thoughts on these David Bowie albums. I'm presenting to you and your thoughts on what I said about, you know, the best song in the world, the best, the greatest, your, your favorite band, how it can change. It's, when, when I'm listening to Captain Beefheart, or Lou Reed, or The Velvet Underground, I'm really thinking, there's nothing better, better than this in the world. It's the best. And that's just, uh, Music is such a gift. Don't you just love that? And there is a Sparks David Bowie connection on this album. Because the first song, I think there's another one too. But anyway, It's No Game. It has a, uh, a female vocal on it. And she is one of the two females on the cover of Sparks' Kimono My House. I bet you didn't know that. And the other connection, of course, is this was produced by Tony Visconti, who also produced Sparks, my favorite Sparks album, Indiscreet. I'm actually thinking of singing Sparks, this town ain't big enough for both of us, in an upcoming video where I'm singing a song. 
I won't remember most of the lyrics though. It's so fast paced. Or maybe I'll, uh, something for the girl with everything, which is even more crazy. Even if I had half the lyrics in front of me, I'm going to just screw it right up. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> and I love this album. I don't know why. I might have even had it on CD and I ended up selling it. But I'm keeping this. I'm going to love it. I also want to do a video at some point on some, some of my favorite record labels. Remember to check out my Patreon page. I actually got another Patreon the other day. Thank you. It's free to look at. And a little booklet. With the lyrics. Now, uh, trying to remember his name. Oh my god. Mick Ronson. And Ian Hunter, I live in a small city called Trenton, Ontario, which is about 100 miles east of Toronto. Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson played in this little club here back in, probably in the 80s, I think. Never did see them, really cool. So there, I'm going to be listening to these tonight. And when I'm listening to them, I'm going to be saying to myself, David Bowie is the greatest artist of all time. So I hope you enjoyed my unboxing. I won't sing the jinx anymore. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.